Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at Mystic Market, Craft Your Fortune from Think Fun. And uh, basically it's a 30 minute game, 10 ages, 10 and up, two to four players. You are basically collecting sets of different things, cashing them in, uh, different ingredients and so forth, using some of those ingredients to craft different potions, using those potions to gain more money and gain a special ability. Uh, basically you're trying to get the most money by the end of the game. Whoever has done that will be the winner. Let's go ahead and get down to the table. I'll show you how it works and then we'll come back with some final thoughts right after that. So here I have a three player game of Mystic Market set up for you. It does play up to four and it also can play at two players as well. Uh, so basically what you're trying to do here is you're trying to get the most money by the end of the game. The game is going to end when the ingredient deck runs out, when the last ingredient card is drawn. After that player's turn, everybody gets one more turn and then whoever has the most money at the end of that final turn is the winner. What we are basically doing is trying to use these different ingredients. We have red dragon scales, orange phoenix feathers, yellow orc teeth, green kraken tentacles, blue mermaid tears, and purple pixie powder that we are using for ingredients. And there is a set collection aspect of it, where as you can see here, if you turn in uh, three of a kind for green or two of a kind with blue or four of a kind with uh, orange or three of a kind with yellow, you're going to be getting however much that is worth with that large number underneath each of these different vials. So right now, if you trade in four phoenix feathers on your turn, you're gonna be getting six uh, gold, which equals points. But you can also use these ingredients to craft these different potions, which are going to give you a, an amount of money when you use that potion uh, that will go into your coffers, which of course also equals points, but it'll also give you a special ability that's shown down at the bottom of the card there that you can use. Now you can craft and use potions whenever you like on your turn, but your turn will consist of doing one of the following different things. So for example, when you buy things on your turn, you're going to be able to purchase one or two ingredient cards, either face up from here or from the top of the deck. Now, when you purchase them face up right here, you're going to use the bracketed dots that are on this uh, ingredient holder over here. So the blue and the purple here, you're going to have to spend three coins to purchase one card that's face up. With the green and the yellow, you'll have to spend two coins. And with orange and red, you'll have to spend one coin right now as this market stands. But if you want to purchase from the top of the deck, you simply spend two coins for each card that you want to do that way. So if you only want to draw one card, you'll spend $2. If you want to draw two, you'll spend four. You can also choose to swap. So if you have cards in your hand that you don't necessarily want right now, you can choose to swap one with any of the others. So maybe I want to swap this dragon scale here with the Kraken tentacles so I can do that. Now with swapping, you can also do one or two. Another thing you can do is sell cards here for the large number that are printed underneath each of them. Now in the sell cards phase, you can sell as many sets as you want. So if you have a set of three greens and a set of uh, three yellows, you'd be able to sell them both. But whenever you do sell, you have to uh, shift the value of the market. So if you sell greens first, this will come out and go to the back of the seat like this. And then if you wanna sell yellow, you would also do that as well, which would be a good way to do it because that way you're getting 10 twice instead of 10 and eight. But another thing that you can do on your turn, if you want to simply manipulate the market here, is you can sell one of any card. You won't take any of the coins that that card, uh, the, a set of that color will give you, but you will switch and do a value shift in the market. For example, let's say that I had three greens in my hand. I will, uh, since you can sell as many times as you want, you can sell one dragon scale and that will shift the market. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sell these three for eight, 
which will do this, and so forth and so on. Now, with all that having been said, there is a little bit of a wrench that's thrown into the system, and that takes the form of these supply shift cards. Now, these supply shift cards are uh, dealt and shuffled into the ingredient deck. There are six of them, but only three of them are used per game. And basically what this will do is, when one of these cards comes up, it will automatically, let's say the green one came up first, it will automatically do a shift where this will become the 15 spot. So we have to cycle using purple first and then green and I'm sorry, and then blue. And now green is up here in the top spot, which is what this does. But if the orange one had come up, we would continue until orange is up at the 15 spot like so. So these uh, supply shift cards will come up randomly. And again, only three of them have been dealt into the deck. So it will only happen three times, but that coupled with people selling a single ingredient to shift the market, this will fluctuate quite a lot during the course of a game. So with this player going first, we're gonna go ahead and take our hand of cards here. We have two reds and two greens, which right now doesn't really help that much, except for maybe the cost of this tonic of borrowing down here. We could do that. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and craft that, and we'll put the used ingredients into here, and we'll craft this tonic of borrowing and put it in our tableau. This will immediately refill when that happens. And now I have this potion in front of me that I can use whenever I wish. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it because it says that I can take one card from the ingredient market. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that. I'm going to use this. It gives me two, two coins for having used that potion. And then I get to take one card from the market. Let's go ahead and uh, take the green tentacles right here. That will automatically refill. This has a supply shift, so the reds, uh, it's already here at the back. So what we'll have to do is cycle through until that uh, red is at the uh, top part, which really kind of hurts because I was about to sell my greens for 12 bucks. This is taken out of the game and replaced with another one like so. Um, Wow, do I wanna do that? Yeah, we'll go ahead and continue to do it. So I'll sell these three greens uh, for eight coins, taking the five, six, seven, eight from the bag, just like this. And now since I've sold green, that will actually shift in the market like so. All right, for this person's turn over here, we're going to look at their hand. They have two oranges, a green and a purple. Uh, so we're going to, first of all, use the green and the purple to go ahead and craft this uh, reduction serum. Now the reduction serum says that we can sell uh, half a set for the current value of a full set. And for sets of three, you can sell just one card. So you actually would round down there. And then this potion would actually refill like that. So what I think I'll do is I'll spend two coins here uh, from over there and purchase one of these blues and put it into my hand like so. That will automatically refill in here. And that'll be all I do. I am, however, going to use this potion. It doesn't give me a profit at all, but it is going to allow me to sell half a set of blue for the full amount. So I'm going to sell that one blue for 10 gold, and that comes over here into my tableau. This will shift the price there. This will get discarded, and that will be the end of my turn. And now for this player's turn over here, you have two purples, an orange, and a yellow. And uh, we're gonna go and use that orange and yellow. Just work out that way to uh, purchase this exchange elixir. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use that. That gains four coins, so I'll put one in and get five out. And that allows me to swap one card from your hand with one of from another player's. This would have refilled already. Uh, so this guy doesn't have any left. So he'll swap this one with one of these. We'll just do it at random. And there we have it. So now there's a purple and an orange in his hand. Not much he can do, but he does get to take his turn now. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and spend one coin to get this blue. And then we're gonna go ahead and use the blue and the purple to go ahead and take this uh, elixir of wealth. 
And of course, we will go ahead and immediately use that. I use this one as well to get 15 coins, and that's the only thing that it actually allows you to do. So that will be 15 bucks uh, added to there, and that's the end of his turn. And this is how the game continues until, like I said earlier, this deck is completely gone, and once that point has been reached, everybody gets to take one more turn, and then whoever has the most coins at the end of that final turn is the winner. So that's about that for Mystic Market. This is basically a set collection hand management game where you are basically going to try to, uh, you know, buy low, sell high. So I guess there's a little bit of a stock market going in that, going on there because the uh, value of the different ingredients that you're purchasing and using do fluctuate. So it maybe has that little bit of a feel, but it's a very, very light game, uh, very low key. So it's not going to be that much. I'm going to hesitate calling it a stock market game because I guess technically it is, but really it isn't. So my first pro of the game, it should have been painfully obvious, that is the component quality. I think they went over and above for the component quality for this game. That little stock market or the ingredient market ramp and the vials of uh, the different powders that are colored with the, uh, the, the different colors that are in the game. Oh my goodness, those really popped and they really made the game probably more fun than it would be had there just been a track on a piece of cardboard that you used with a meeple or something to that effect. So it's one of those cases where, like I've said before, games that look better are more fun. Now, it doesn't mean that I completely enjoyed it just because of that one group of components. No, uh, I like the artwork and the, and the graphic design of all of the different cards. The font on the cards, both the potions and on the ingredient cards, was easy to read. There wasn't any difficulty there. The artwork employed for all of the different ingredients that you're using uh, was good as well. Again, there isn't a whole lot that they went over and over and over and, and and it's it's not that it's that huge of a thing but man that they really uh put their money where their mouth is so to speak and make the components nice because playing games that have good components is just more fun that's just the way it is um in my opinion that's the way it is now my second pro of the game is quite simply that it plays quickly, it plays easily, and it's very easy to teach. There is, uh, I think that's kind of one of the monikers of, I think, fun game. It's just very simple to teach, but on the other end, there's a lot of strategy and tactics that you can use within the course of the game. Um, a lot of push your luck, too, because you might want to wait and, and hold on to this, but then uh, somebody will change the value of the market once and then one of those supply shift comes up and, and it shifts it away and now you've missed your window. So there's a little bit of a feel of kind of a push your luck and, and waiting for the right thing uh, to happen at the right time so you can capitalize on it. So there is that, but uh, uh, it at, at its core and in its, in its mechanisms, it's very simple to teach, very simple to play. And my third pro of the game is what I've kind of touched on in my second pro uh, in ex explaining it, and that is it does have an undercurrent of strategy and tactic that's going on there. On the surface, it does feel very lucky because you're just kind of waiting on to see what comes out into the market, and sometimes you're top decking cards hoping you get what you uh, really want, but that's really just kind of the veneer uh, that's there. Uh, you do have a lot of important decisions to make. Do I sell this right now? Because I know that that will probably set my opponent up to make more money than I'm making right now. So do I try to manipulate things first and then sell, or do I sell and then hopefully he doesn't have what I think he has? Those are the kinds of decisions that you have to make. And I do really like that it has a little bit of a depth that's there. It's not deep, don't get me wrong, but there is a lot more depth than certainly what meets the eye. So with all those being said, there, I do have some cons for the game. Uh, my first con is that it does have a pretty heavy take that element to it. A lot of the potions that you're going to be using with your ingredients, uh, you steal money from your other players, which is literally points. Uh, you're also going to be able to s steal and or swap 
uh, cards, uh, ingredient cards from your hand with somebody else's hand, and those can hit pretty heavily. Uh, one of the potions I know, when you play it, it gives you six bucks, and then you steal five dollars from somebody else. So that's a that's a, a 11 points that you're getting, but it's actually a net 16 because you're taking five away from somebody and you're getting five. So it's really kind of a heavy-handed potion. It's expensive to get, but at the same time, uh, if, that's, if that happens to you, it doesn't feel too good. So there's a very heavy take that element to the game, which I could have done without. So, I mean, with that having been said, uh, I know I said I was going to give multiple cons here, but I, I think that's probably just because the, the take that element is so strong with this game, it can be very annoying. Uh, so maybe it just felt like two cons. That's why I misspoke uh, before, but there you have it. Um, all in all, I think I'm going to give Mystic Market a 6 out of 10. And the reason I give it a 6 out of 10 and just missed my seal of approval is because of that take that element. Now again, it's a very short game. It plays very fast, so it's probably not going to be that big of a deal for most people. But for me, I just don't like take that elements in games for the most part. Uh, for, you know, just stealing points or stealing resources or what have you. Uh, I know the whole thing is to get the most points, and so taking it from that's a good thing to do, but it just feels cheesy, in my opinion, and it feels kind of, you know, backhanded. I just don't like doing that in games, for the most part. Uh, so, 6 out of 10 is still decent. It is above average. I do think that uh, if it hits the table again, I will not mind playing it again. I do enjoy the game, uh, but for a filler game that has a pretty strong take that element to it, I'd probably rather play something else but I wouldn't mind playing it uh, again so six out of ten for me from Mystic Market thanks for joining me I certainly appreciate it we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side take care thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video if you enjoy our videos subscribe to the channel for more fun comprehensive board game coverage also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.